Hello, welcome to episode 205 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 7th of April. I had to think then. <laughs> So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting. I have a blast from the past which is a knitting so I'm keeping them together and then I also have an ask me anything question from the ask me anything thread in the Ravelry group which is also knitting related so I'm going to keep those all together then I have a bit of sewing to show you and then some information on my shop update at the end of the podcast there will be an appearance from Jensen in his new jumper so we'll check for that so first of all I have some prizes to draw I'm going to quickly pop the names of the winners on the screen but I will message you on Ravelry if it's through Ravelry or Instagram if it's through Instagram um, and I also have a prize to draw for the email subscribers for April I'll explain that at the end of the podcast in the shop update section but first of all the make-alongs I have the retro mal and the winner for the retro mal is Katie so congratulations Katie and that ended just at the end of March we have craft 20 a day make a longer going on right till the end of the year and I'm drawing prizes quarterly so the two prize winners for that are Elaine and Catty G so congratulations to you both as well so I'll have the craft house magic spring shawl along 2022 starting at the beginning of this month well it's already seven days in so we're already started really and it's basically going to be a make along for shawls and scarves um, and anything sort of shawl related so I am going to be knitting the Ziggy interrupted wrap which is crochet so if it's crochet or knitting or tatted lace or anything like that if it's a shawl or wrap or a scarf you can include it or weaving of course I'm very open to different crafts so I'm going to do the Ziggy interrupted wrap by Sandra Paul and I showed you these four yarns that I'd picked from the East Anglia yarn festival that I'm going to make mine out of so it'll be interesting to see what you guys are going to make for the spring shawl along I will open a thread well actually I've already done it on Ravelry and you can use the hashtag on Instagram chm spring shawl along 2020 and I'll leave details in the description bar down below as well well let's get on with the knitting shall we I have done a very poor effort in terms of knitting this week but I will show you what I've done so last week I showed you that I'd completed a sock from the raging sea of clouds opal yarn that I've got in my shop and I showed you it's got gorgeous colour changes there and I really enjoy knitting with this I have managed to knit just past the foot decreases on the second sock because I wanted to get these finished for when I um, see my mum and dad for Easter so these are for my dad and I'm knitting a slightly larger circumference of sock than I would normally for me or anyone else and it's a 72 stitch sock with um, a 12 12 row two by two rib at the top a standard slip stitch heel and then I'm continuing with 72 stitches all the way down the foot for my dad because he's got quite big feet or wide feet anyway he's not got mega long feet but they are quite wide so I've not even managed to complete a sock in a week which is absolutely terrible <laughs> I have stuff to show you with the blast from the past etc so I do have stuff to talk about this week at least but I'm loving the way these yarns are knitting up so that you can see that they pretty much match which I'm really pleased about to make socks match when they're variegated yarn what I do is when I'm starting a sock I try to pick a point in the yarn that I can find again so with this gradient it is more difficult to find but what I did is I looked carefully at the yarn and I could see that there was a block bit in the yarn where there was definitely just red rather than going into the turquoise or anything and I cut the yarn there and that is where I was thinking right this is where I'm going to start the first sock so I know to try and find this point for the second one then I always find that it takes me about a metre of yarn to do the cast on method so I take a metre of yarn and I measure it quite easily by just measuring from my shoulder to the end of my hand when I stretch it out so I don't have to get a tape measure out which is ideal <laughs> so I take that metre and then I put, make my slip knot in that yarn 
and then I do a long tail cast on a standard long tail cast on for whatever number of stitches I have now I do take the meter of yarn for whatever stitch count I cast on because sometimes I'll do 56 stitches or sometimes I'll do 72 stitches but I seem to have enough if I take a meter of yarn whichever it is I'll just have a little bit left over at the end just a standard technique that I tend to do so that I know that I have enough I have plenty but although I do if I do a 56 stitch sock I do end up with a little bit more wastage at the end but then when I've knitted my first sock and I come to do my second sock I'll pull off the yarn off the ball until I get to that point where I've cut where the beginning of that red starts so that I know that I'll pretty much have an exact match and it will work a lot easier if you've got a self-striping yarn where you have definite ch colour changes. If you look at Helen's yarn that I showed you last week, there's obviously very distinct colour change lines. So I'll cut it between two colours meet and at that point I can really tell that I'm going to be able to duplicate the second sock exactly the same as the first. And I just keep a track as I'm knitting the sock. Um, I keep putting it up against it and thinking, well, is that an exact match? And I transfer to the heel flap at the same point. And I'll also check when I get to the point where I pick up the stitches around the heel flap. And just every so often, I'll just keep checking that I'm keeping on track. Obviously, because I'm doing a variegated yarn, I'm doing that check a lot more often than I would if I'm using a yarn that has definite stripes. I'll just need to sort of check that when I'm picking up the stitches um, on the heel flap, for example, that it's, that it's turning out the same. I must admit, though, if it's a very definite stripe, I tend to do not the heel flap and gusset, but a short row heel or an afterthought heel for those so that the stripes aren't affected by the heel. But there we go. That's my knitting for this week that's awful isn't it Jensen has been particularly niggly this week in the evenings and I've not got a lot of knitting done but I'm hoping to catch up next week I must say before I go on to the next section next week I'm not going to do a podcast I'm going to have a week off because my parents are coming to visit so it'll be nice to sort of spend a bit more time with them I will return with lots more projects the week after I should be able to set myself up so I've got plenty to show you in the coming weeks then so I have a blast from the past to show you next. So this is the Transportation Scarf by Tannis Grey. And I knitted this possibly a year or two ago. And it is out of the Knitting Magic book from Tannis Grey. Um, I will show you it in a minute because the question I've got next is related to the book. So I can show you it properly. But this is a Aran Weight scarf and it is colour work. And there are several different blocks. There's the Night Bus platform nine and three quarters and some brooms and that's just repeated all the way down the length of the scarf so when you have it on half of it is actually upside down i could have convert i could have inverted it so that i didn't have some of the blocks upside down um, but i decided to keep it the same because i thought well you might have part of it sort of over the shoulder so in fact it is the right way up <laughs> so it is a very long scarf and it is very cozy so you can wrap yourself in it several times and be very cuddly and cozy it did take quite a few skeins of yarn i will leave a link to my project page so you can see exactly what yarns i used they were all my colorways so i think this was purple rain the ordinary world this one this yellow is and lovely mustard colour which is called walking on sunshine and the navy blue in the platform nine three quarters symbol is because the night um, but I'm really pleased with this Adam loves wearing it because it's lovely and cozy and warm and soft because it's on the merino base so going into the question I've got from the lovely Christina from the ask me anything thread on the Ravelry group before I answer the question if you do have a question and you don't use Ravelry you can pop an email to me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and I've popped the email address in the description bar down below if you want to email me so the question from Christina was what is my favorite Harry Potter movie and are there any patterns from the Tannis Gray's most recent book Knitting Magic More Patterns from Hogwarts and Beyond that I fancied 
Right, first question, which was my favourite Harry Potter movie? It has got to be The Prisoner of Azkaban because I just love that story. It's It just seems so much richer in terms of sort of convoluted storyline. I love the time travel thing and I like the fact that the story is starting to get a little bit darker with Sirius Black coming into it and it's it's where Harry learns a lot more about his past and how and what things happened to his parents and I really love the book as well as the movie. I think that it's been directed really well. I like the, the look and the colours that have been portrayed on screen. The way they did the Marauders map. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> so that was my favourite Harry Potter movie and I haven't got any plans to knit anything from the new book. I have had a look but there was nothing that really jumped out to me but I have a couple of plans of knitting things from the first of the um, Knitting Magic books. So this is the first book that Tannis Gray wrote. This is Knitting Magic, the official Harry Potter knitting pattern book. Um, and this came out a couple of years ago and it was gifted to me by a lovely friend so thank you very much. <laughs> so the first pattern that I desperately need to knit, <laughs> there's a lot of patterns that I desperately need to knit but I haven't started, is the Expecto Patronum mittens. I love these. I have been looking at them and I was looking at them when I was knitting on Adam's mittens which I will quickly show you my progress on um, briefly which is basically nothing but those of you who haven't seen me show them on the, the podcast again I will show um, the mittens that I've been working on for Adam but I love the Specto Patronum ones for me so these are a four ply mitten um, that they're a full mitten so that it covers the thumb and fingers completely uh, but I thought that I might modify the cuff because I do like a cuff that is slightly more sort of fitted so I thought a ribbed cuff would be really lovely so I have started knitting and I've completed one of the Great Ambition mittens and this is for Adam because he is a Slytherin and it's got the snake in an S shape on the front and then on the back you've got some diamond shapes and then there's another S on the thumb as well and I really like the way these came together or well, they say these I've basically only knitted one and I haven't started the second one yet and I love the way the rib works on here especially because that looks um, a little bit like the jumpers that they wear as well in especially in the colors that I've knitted this in um, I will pop a link to the pattern because I can't think off the top of my head what the pattern, who the pattern's by, but I'll pop it in the description bar down below. So I thought it would be really nice to have the Expecto Patronum mittens with the rib on as well. And I do like the colours that they are in, in the pattern book. There are a couple of other things that I really like, but I don't know whether I'd necessarily wear them. So I don't wear an awful lot of jumpers, but I do like this jumper on the back with the time turner um, around the yoke. So uh, this book, I definitely recommend it because there are quite a number of patterns that I really like. The second book, uh, there are some really nice patterns, but nothing that I think that I would really desperate to knit. Um, but I might change my mind. I might go back to it in the future. <laughs> so thank you for your question, Christina. I'm gonna take this off because it's absolutely boiling. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have my sewing section of the podcast and I've been doing some sewing for the charity so I've been making some syringe driver bags along with my local quilt group for the hospital so a syringe driver is a mechanism to administer medication to people who are in hospices so people who are really ill and they put the syringe driver in these bags and they can have them over their body so that it can walk around with the syringe driver on them so that it can still be administering medication or they can be hung on the end of a bed to hold the syringe driver where it's needed. So these are made using a pattern that I found on the internet to do with charity making, charity sewing. So I'll leave a link to those in the description bar down below. I did make some modifications to mine though, just because 
I make a lot of bags so I decided to do it my way but in effect it's made it the right size for the syringe driver to go in um, and the strap is actually attached in the same method as the pattern suggests. So I had two pieces of fabric which is basically the outside fabric that is one piece and then there's a piece of fabric for inside for this one I've done the same fabric. I have got one where I've done a, a contrast lining in there so you have a piece of fabric for the outside and a piece of fabric for the inside i actually did it so that i joined the short edges of the lining in the outer fabric together putting the right sides together sewing those short edges and then moving the fabric so those short edges were sort of in the center and you had the inside of the fabric one side and the outside of the fabric the other stitched down one side completely and then the other side i left a gap turned it the right way round, stitched that gap closed, popped the lining inside and then top stitched it on the all the way round, eighth of an inch from the top and then I've just made a strap by folding the fabric over um, into the centre and then in half making sure that the ends are folded in as well, stitched that down all the way round um, for, on the handle separately and then I've attached it to the bag by popping it on the bag and stitching it down so there we go so the original pattern I said I got said that if you actually put the outside and lining piece together stitch all the way around apart from a small gap turn that round and then fold it so that you have the bag shape and then stitch a quarter of an inch from this edge and a quarter of an inch from that edge so it forms a bag so you end up with some sort of piping around the edge which is equally nice it's just that i like to mix things up a bit <laughs> So I've made four of those. I had some different fabrics in my stash which I mixed um, that I thought went well together. So I had two exactly the same there. I had some fairy fabric which I thought was particularly sweet. If you look really carefully there's some fairies in an embrace there and a number of other little scenes all in the foliage. And that's in, all in the same fabric, that particular one. And then the one I showed you in the beginning with the higher synths on. Um, but I thought I'd use fabrics. I think they're pretty. So that actually it's really nice to receive something um, that's a pretty pattern as well. So I did those and my quilt group have been making a whole batch of them. So that will those will be taken to the hospital in the next few weeks. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link to the pattern in the description bar down below. But I check with your local hospital to see whether those are the dimensions that they require for your syringe drivers um, in your local hospital. So I have my shop update now. So last week I decided to draw a prize every month for those of you who subscribe to my email subscription on my website. So to go to that, you need to scroll to the bottom of my page on my website and there's a box at the bottom. If you pop your email in there and subscribe to my email notifications, you'll get an email every time I do a shop update, which is probably uh, about two times a month. Uh, I try not to bombard you with too many emails. And it just shows you when I've got new things on the website and um, when the yarn clubs are available, etc. So the winner for April is Maureen. So congratulations, Maureen. Obviously, I won't give your complete details over the podcast, but I will send you an email um, via the email address that you subscribe to and I will get your prize sent to you as soon as possible. I will leave it as a surprise to what I send you, but it will probably be one of the latest yarn clubs. So congratulations, Maureen. Every month I will be doing a prize draw so you could be a winner as well. So I also wanted to mention that the May yarn clubs will be available on the 22nd of April until the 1st of May and they will be shipped on the 13th of May. So that is the May yarn clubs. So those of you who purchased yarn clubs from April, they will be shipped on Friday. So look out for those. So last of all, I have an appearance from Jensen in another handmade outfit. So over to you, Jensen. Hello, Jensen. Are you going to show us all your new jumper? Now this, oh yes. <laughs> this is the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. And this is actually a one-year-old size. And he is in it already. 
Um, some of his other jumpers he's grown out of, so I thought I'd try him on just to see if this one would fit, and it actually does. He's got a bit of growing room in it, I think, um, but it's nice to have one that's not too tight or anything, so that's lovely. Thank you very much, Jensen. <laughs> So I forgot to say about Jensen's little jumper that he was wearing that it is a stockinette jumper but there is a garter stitch detail at the top of the jumper. With a neckline just make sure that you do a cast on that is stretchy because it hasn't it doesn't give him a massive amount of room to go over his head. And this yarn is a three Irish girls yarn that I picked up from Florida when we were on holiday and I just think it's beautiful how it's pulled. And it's really pretty those like zigzags and that's the flax jumper by tin can knits so thank you very much to jensen for doing his modeling yet again i'll have to start paying him won't i <laughs> thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in the next podcast bye